What's up guys, and of course always, welcome back to another video from yours truly, The Scarander. Now this video will contain a discussion and a viability theory on these three individual Pokemon. This is by far the three best starters we had in years. And I say that with them knowing that these are the ones that actually didn't have a dual stab combination, which could have been booster viability quite a lot. But individually, these three are actually rather good anyway. Good stat distribution, they're very defined and they got a really broad move pool overall i like them this is probably the first time i felt all three make sense as they are really usable in a of course competitive area and now i will discuss like i said their reliability in vdc to an extent but more towards singles and leagues where i think they can shine more um, they're individually all three really strong and i like them because of that and um, this of course is due to pokem's tweet of why Cinderace is the best starter and he wanted to know of course, his followers fall behind it, what they think, and I got my hands dirty. No, not really, but I, I gave a few thoughts and I got a good response. And I think it's interesting to debate these Pokemon as we're now moving forward to a meta that could very well be without Dynamax. And this means a lot of Pokemon will shine a lot more. And it also means that their supportive variability will be more interesting as they're now going for a more stamina game where they aren't the one killed by, you know, any switching. And that actually means that they will have time to develop their, well, I was going to say inner focus, but rather more towards what they really can do besides their damage output, which I think will be more interesting in the long run. So we, I'm going to do, in theory, some type of list. I'm going to start off with the one I think is the weakest to the one I think is strongest. But to go without saying, these three starters are all three really good. So it's more of a preference and why I think one is better than the other should be not taken as a smogan defined you you or you or whatever because i i will not stretch on that i have not that knowledge i'm just going to debate on face value and you know my personal opinions why it will work better than the other so with that said let's start off with the first or theory the worst now starting off this list are intellion and i think it goes without saying besides being a parking app here in sweden it is also the name of the final starter war evolution which is quite right. Its stat version are really good at 17 HP, 65 split on its special offense and defense. So it's not the most bulkiest thing around. However, offensively, it stands out a lot. 85 attack, which is impressive in theory. But the special attack is where it's at. It's 125. Yay. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> and of course, 120 it's speed, making the top 10 speediest Pokemon in the Regeneration 8 meta right now. So, yeah, it's quite right. Um, Torrent is its standard ability to go with Sniper as an ability. So Sniper basically means that your stab will do double the damage uh, instead of 150%. I believe it's 225. That's quite a lot. And also getting into the likes of Focus Energy. So one in theory can see this as um, well a, a worse Kingdra because it doesn't get the same damage output as Kingdra do. While Kingdra is in theory weaker. It has Draco, it has Tyro Pump and stuff like that that could utilize that quite a lot better. However, Intellion doesn't get that. However, it does have a few other moves to make it really work. Uh, first and foremost, Sniper Shot. Sniper Shot ignores abilities when it connects, which means that something like Water Absorb and Storm Gray are ignored and you will connect that damage. Unfortunately, like I said, the special attack is its prime um, stat and I guess it's actually access to a fair amount of moves such as Dog Pulse, Shadow Balls, Gold, Hydro Pump. Ice Beam, you know, whatnot, the standard. It even gets Ear Slash and Mud Shot, which is great. Mud Shot would have been great had Dynamax been still a thing, which I feel is unlikely. You also get Weather Balls, so you can do kind of those really nasty things to get in a science team, which is great. Um, but besides that, unfortunately, its best move pool, or actually its physical one, and it gets actually the like of Agility, Soul Stance, Baton Pass, which are great things to have. But yeah, you can only boost its. Uh, special attack by workout which is not necessarily all that good uh, it also gets screening so I have light screen and reflect which makes it a really good partner in a league aspect even in single at times due to that very very high speed it actually I do believe it's much like tentacruel like it just get those things and it doesn't make any sense it shouldn't uh, it gets it that's that's right uh, but anyway I said that it, it's physical move pool with liquidation icicle spear u-turn uh, it has pirate option which is incredible um, it just works great together with two types of priority in Aqua Jet and Sucker Punch, which also is great, and Felstinger. Uh, it even gets Haze, so it can be 
or you can't be set up upon basically but besides that i think it's it just it's one of those pokemon that it get a lot of things it can do really good but where it excels is not where its stat is at and ability doesn't necessarily help that as the others got stronger abilities for more team-based values but as a glass cannon a potential sweeper uh it does quite right it can use specs because of that real high speed it can go modest get it with scar because of that high speed uh, it, it goes back and forth and it's actually quite right overall like i said pretty shallow special move pool something like grass now would probably help to quite a lot and um, but and nasty plot would have been super helpful hell even a dual combination water ghost which is something i really thought was going to be doesn't have that and I'm, yeah i think it works against it um but overall i mean this is what i could consider a potential greninja and quite frankly if it's gonna have a hidden ability for me that should have been protein as it is um intel spy variant i kind of i would have liked that sniper makes sense but it also kind of devalued this pokemon's viability which is really unfortunate overall though it's actually quite right as in the league aspect i can see it works as a sweeper i can see it works as a screener and of course a pivot option and in the singles it actually has been done quite right um standard set is actually leveling in between but the screener is quite common together with specs and stock for all the right reasons so overall intellion not a bad pokemon the other just have that small edge to make them more interesting uh, in a team build than intellion does unfortunately as for my second pokemon i say cinderace is that and i know a few people will react to this and for those who will it is fine as i see this pokemon as a really really strong one and probably among the best in the generation i have my reasons for making the other one first but cinderace overall it is absolutely without a doubt really the greninja of this generation as stat wise it is absolutely offensive hp at fair 80 and then 75 split on its defenses it's quite all right it's not as frail as intellion but at the same time it's not here to take hits then we have 116 attack which is quite impressive 65 special attack which is well good for you and 119 in speed which still makes it one of the speediest pokemon around it's up there with of course well intellion around 120 it's actually a very fair speed here really aren't that many things out speeding this and overall Cinderace has a lot of things going for it but the one that stands out is not blaze it is an ability in libero which is protein it is absolute protein you change the type to the move you go for if you go for electro ball or u-turn you change your type into electric instead of fire or bug instead of fire it is absolutely a wonderful ability which will make this pokemon a lot more viable once that goes out the reason i think it works against it is for really one reason it does of course due to u-turn make it a great pivot option to get it with offensive viability but if you're going to compare it to greninja there is one thing standing out here greninja can run something like life orb um you most likely gonna have a non-scarf variant or a non uh, banded variant on the Cinderace because you need heavy duty boots to be able to come in and out and attack properly because you're weak to stealth rocks. If when a Dynamax now goes away, eventually, most likely, um, this is a Pokemon that absolutely needs the support to either have a spinner for it to be offensive or it needs the item to avoid taking damage once it comes in. That means it loses a bit of a layer that Greninja had because it's, well, you clearly aren't boosting yourself in any way whatsoever but you have to stab damage output and that's quite right but it's something to keep in mind that it will be compared to greninja but it won't be as viable as greninja because of those kind of well i would say item lock-ins really however uh, it does also get one other thing that it has over other fire types and that is a physical fire stat that isn't recoil and that is powerball it has a small chance to miss and that's always going to be a thing but it's more hittable than fire blast but i'll take that over flare blitz any day and not get recall it also has quick attack which is quite right actually and we'll have agility if you want to use that we we'll also have probably its main niche in court change which makes it an interesting kind of anti um spinner um the way core change work is that you exchange all both hasses and screens to the other field back and forth basically 
If you're facing off against an opponent that goes with dual screen, you can use court change to steal those screens. Same thing works if they set a stealth rock upon you. You can court change, which will mean that they get a stealth rock on their side or whatnot. And that's that's actually quite decent. It's really interesting for an offensive Pokemon to be able to offensively check defensive replies such as this. It will make, well, Cinderace the most viable individual Pokemon in singles and smoke meta by far because it has an anti response to um, stackers, which is, like I said, incredible. In a meta without Dynamaxing, that could be crucial, which is why I kind of want to talk about their viability. And of course, going for core change will mean that you change yourself to a normal type, which is unfortunate. Um, besides that, it gets a few decent moves, but nothing compares to power ball we get u-turn you get electro ball you get low kick um shadow ball if you want to capitalize on that and blaze kick if you don't want to rely on uh, well power ball but trust me you want to you want to do that you also get set up moves in bulk up which is actually awesome um you have sucker punch super fang high jump kicks so overall it has a really really good strong combination it really should however have been a firefighting I, I, I can't believe they actually didn't take that route but Overall, Cinderace is, like I said, they're individually one of the strongest Pokemon is Smogon OU. Uh, VGC, I couldn't say, and in a league aspect, I can only fear it lies, but quite frankly, I think it's easier to prep for in face value, but overall, it's still due to its speed for 119 and 116 attack. You still have to deal with that, and it could push a lot of pressure to a team without a doubt. So, like I said, individually, it is the strongest of these Pokemon this generation, but... I optimize for a one other Pokemon, of course. So for me, Rillaboom is absolutely the strongest starter this generation. Um, it should go without saying though, it, its stance repetition is quite right. It's more of a tankier Pokemon, if the other were glass cannons and sweepers, this one is more attack or retaliate aspect, even though it is quite speedy. Its defensive stats are really, really impressive, 100 HP to get with 90 in its defense and 70 in its special defense. Special attack is not worth talking about, it has a fair speed here at 85. It does put it in a run of a mill kind of aspect, but for being a bulkier Pokemon it's actually quite impressive. And attack, 125. It's a boom Pokemon, you get in, it, it booms, you get hurt. It is absolutely closer to a type of Bulu combination here. Uh, lacking, of course, any type of um, um, com or style combination besides grass is unfortunate as it does mean it's less bulkier, defensively active, but at the same time, it isn't as bad. Um, but for me, the reason it is most or the best here is because of its hidden ability in grassy search. Overgrow, yeah, that works, it's fine, whatever. Uh, but this is the only Pokemon who can set up terrain and pivot. And it's actually invaluable in a meta without being able to Dynamax, as there is really no way besides setting up your own terrains, besides, of course, the auto terrains. Pink Kirchen, which is an electric one uh, that sets electric terrain, um, can't Volt Switch. And, and that's really unfortunate to get with Indeedee, who sets Psychic terrain, uh, which also it lacks a way of actually piloting. Rillaboom is the only one pulling that off, and the reason that is invaluable is because of the unburdened Pokemon that can use this. And probably the most prominent unburdened Pokemon in this generation, like last one, is Halucha. Halucha is already a really strong Pokemon, and will probably remain that for the rest of this generation, at least in, in uh, Sword and Shield. But it needs the terrain to be active, and while it, in Dynamax form, can set up his own training with Thunder Punch, that might very well no longer be an option. And if that's the case, Rillaboom is going to be that absolute partner to work that out. Now, it isn't as good as Coco would have been, and for, for all the right reasons. Defensively, Rillaboom isn't helping that much how Lucha, if anything, you know, the sheer weaknesses in flying, uh, so it's really good that there aren't that many flying, but it still is one of those things that work great, and we still have more unburdened Pokemon that can capitalize on this. But of course, Howlucha is the one standing out the most, as being one of the most offensive threats out there. That said, though, it has a lot more going for it. It's not only that, um, it has something like Knockoff, it has Soul Stance, it has Noble Roar if you want to capitalize on something like that, it even has Boom Burst, don't use that. Um, <clears throat> it also has the likes of the Brick Break, so. 
you can set up something like screens versus this. Also get Drain Punch, which is great for attacking your Pokemon. And Stomping Tantrum, which means you can use something else uh, besides Earthquake. Um, really, really great. Uh, we also have something like Low Kick, we have Taunt, we have Bull Cap, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, Leaf Stone, Grass Knot, Darkest Lariat, High Horsepower, Body Press. Um, when it comes to Egg Moves, which is one thing that's invaluable in and what do you call it in VGC is fake out uh, together with grassy search and fake out that's incredible we also have leech seed and we have growth so it can work in a potential sun team so just overall um it is a really complete pokemon on its own merits and we've seen something like choice bandit set works great and uh, we've seen the source that set work really well together with knockoff um and then it actually has a signature move, which I forgot to mention, which lowers opposing Pokemon's speed. Um, let's see if I remember what it was called. It was called the drum beating or something like that. Yeah, drum beat. Yeah, drum beating. Uh, it's basically, it's like correlation in power, but it lowers your speed by one, uh, which is incredible. Um, you can, I mean, the grass is surge already boosts your grass move by 50%, and, you know, it doesn't have to be the wood hammer. You don't have to take all that recall if you just can capitalize on a... Something like a switching comes in, that's gonna check you, you can run, go for drum beating, lower its speed, in theory you're now faster than that threat, you could very well take it out with a more um, filler move such as knockoff or earthquake or anything like that. Basically, this Pokemon has a lot of layers to it, it'd be hard to prep for it, since it's bulkier, it's tougher to take out, and the meta now they are, in theory, a lot slower than the previous one is, it actually could stand out. The th only thing to have it against it is, of course, that it isn't that specially defensive and it lacks recovery. However, all it starts to do, which means that this one is still the most bulkier one and is absolutely in there for a longer run. And like I said, in an environment with Dynamax isn't active, there are a lot of Pokemon now that can stay in a few extra turns that aren't going to kill by setup and boom, Dynamax and three Pokemon are out. Now we have a Pokemon here that can stay in, set up a grassy search, have already a passive recovery on its own merits and could probably stay in and do a lot of work or switch out and support his teammate. Grassy Surge also of course lowers the earthquake damage output which means something like Xreal could have a hard time to actually dent this Pokemon if it would come down to it. So overall, Rillaboom, fantastic Pokemon this generation. Like I said, why well, argue that in uh, Cinderace, I'm gonna say in Cinderace, but no, Cinderace is individually the most strongest one. I think Rillaboom overall offers the most to a team as a whole. Grassy Surge will absolutely be the best way of setting up Halucha due to the move pull of actually you turning out and of course getting a safe switching onto Halucha, which isn't possible with the others. So overall, Rillaboom is hands down my option uh, of the best start of this generation. If you have a different opinion, please do share it. I want to read your comments and why I think one way or another. I can't wait for all these hidden abilities to come out, and I can't wait to Dynamax being banned. While I do want Dynamax in the game, I also recognize it as a competitive flaw for most people. It really is making a lesser work of really interesting Pokemon that can't work as the art just knocked out so easily. So that's the guys, that's all this thing for of course watching and um Next video will be a Wi-Fi upload, I promise. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye.